Hey guys, it's Keith. I'm back with another Mac tutorial. Today I'm going to cover iDVD. So this tutorial is assuming that you've uh, done all the editing to your video on iMovie and you're wanting to put it to uh, disk with a uh, menu. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click on iDVD. I've got it on my uh, dock right here. Otherwise you could use command spacebar like we've talked about before to find it. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and this dialog box is going to open up and uh, 90% of the time I'm going to hit this top option which is create a new project. Uh, open existing projects, pretty self-explanatory. If you uh, had something you're working on, uh, you would go there. Magic iDVD is um, something that uh, takes the process I'm about to explain and makes it even easier by laying all these boxes in a grid and you just plop the movies and pictures down that you want. But I think you're going to find that what we're about to do is so easy that you won't use that. Uh, one step DVD actually takes all the footage off of your camcorder and uh, puts it into a movie and so that's assuming you don't want to do any editing and you want to utilize every uh, minute of footage that you shot so uh, if you don't want to do any editing you could go ahead and put it to a disc real quick uh, using one step DVD so I'm going to hit create new project I'm just going to save it to the desktop for now and you can name you can change the name uh, it says migrate DVD by default um, here we can change the uh, aspect ratio which I'm gonna I've got a high def TV uh, high def TV excuse me so I'm gonna go ahead and select widescreen and create and so um, there's a lot of options in uh, iDVD but uh, I want to show you just how quickly you can make uh, something so if you click on the uh, themes here I'm just gonna say all and you can see that there's quite a bit of different ones, including ones that aren't uh, widescreen. So some of these older ones are, you know, before widescreen TV uh, TVs were the norm. Uh, I'm gonna go up here to uh, one that I kind of like, which is uh, where the heck is that? Reflections Black. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. So that's gonna change my theme. Uh, by hitting the space bar, we can kind of see what it does. There's no music to this one. Some of them have music, and you see there's lots of drop zones and things like that, and that's all editable. So if you uh, followed me in the iMovie uh, tutorials and you sent your, uh, your, your movie into the media browser, the first thing I'm going to do, or I like to do, is to find that movie. And I'm going to find it by going to Media. And then under iMovie, I'm going to hit this little triangle, and there it is, Mac Tutorial 1. And I'm going to go ahead and add that to my project. And I don't know if you noticed, I'm going to redo that again. Uh, you can see here, when I highlight it over uh, Drop Zone 7, I can actually make that um, movie play in one of these drop zones. But if I go over this transparent box, there's a little blue line that shows up around the whole uh, iDVD screen. And that lets me know that it's you know getting dropped in there so two things uh, you will notice is uh, a play movie shows up as well as a scene selection and before I click on scene selection and show you what that did um, if you don't want that if you don't want to have a scene selection or a bonus section you know like kinda like a lot of movies will have a uh, different menus that you can get into then you want to go up here to uh, iDVD preferences and we'll talk about these real uh, more briefly they're pretty uh, pretty uh, general but um, let's see where that's at okay right here in movies it says when importing a movie create chapter sub menus if you don't want that if you just want the person just to hit uh, hit that line hit OK on the remote or play uh, you'll click this middle one which is uh, do not create a chapter sub menu or if you're not sure what you're gonna like you can hit this always ask uh, moving along to the other features um, that one we really don't need to talk about. This one step DVD capture folder would be the only option if you were, were going to take that option of not editing any of your footage off your camcorder. This is just uh, asking you where you want that footage to be saved to. Um, this one's a good one here. It's not checked by default, but you can see I've got it checked under slideshow. The top one, always add original photos to DVD ROM and contents. I make a lot of movies for family members and they're always asking me for the pictures. So essentially what they can do is they can take this movie that they're able to play in their DVD player. 
they can put it in their computer and their computer is going to recognize those uh, JPEG files and allow them to download them uh, to their computer, print them off, whatever they want to do. So it's, it's uh, no different than if I was going to send them the pictures myself. Um, just know that you know if you have a lot of stuff, obviously that takes additional uh, photo or uh, takes additional file space. Sorry, it's getting late. Um, this volume is pretty self-explanatory. Fade the volume out at the end of the slideshow. I'm I'm a big fan of fade. Um, projects uh, NTSC. That's what we're gonna want for the United States. PAL would be something you would use over the UK. You can choose the um, encoding uh, quality. And so we've talked about briefly that uh, you can have this great high def uh, video file, and IDVD is gonna drop it down to an MPEG4 if you're burning something to a dual layer or a um, DVD-R blank or a dual layer DVD-R blank uh, CD or DVD rather. Um, you know, unless you've got obviously you've got a Blu-ray blank disc and a Blu-ray burner, which probably not a lot of people have out there. So the default is best performance. Uh, I switched mine to professional quality. Just know that's going to take up a little mo little bit more space. And here's where you would select the kind of media you have. So you know, if you have a single layer disc, you're you know got about half the space if you have a dual layer. So you know if you've got a big project, you're going to want to do a dual layer. And in general. Not a lot of stuff. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory. This uh, one one thing I do want to talk about: this show Apple logo watermark is checked by default. So if you want everybody to know that you made this on an Apple computer and it's an Apple template, and you want that Apple to show up, then you want to go ahead and leave that check. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that, so I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck that. So with these little boxes uh, checked here, you can see. That there's like a little turn that it does here at the intro so that'd be like the first thing the person watching this would see and if I uncheck it uh, there's really no intro if you want to call it that it just does what the uh, template does the whole time and so I'm gonna leave that checked I kinda like that and the same thing goes with the end so here's unchecked just kinda slides around on this template until the end and then it loops and when you check it kinda it went a little fast, so it kind of the little transparent box does a little swipe away. So I like that. Uh, so the first thing you can do, I just want to talk about real quickly, is that you know I've got my movie in here. Click on here, Command A to, oops, Command A. Oh, sorry, it's not Command A. You would think it would be, but just two clicks on it, it highlights it. And so I'm just gonna call this uh, Nicholas. Josh, and uh, that's a real quick way to change the uh, name. So uh, you know, if you're in a hurry, you could just drop some pictures in here, drop the movie, and, and call it good. But um, obviously, for the purpose of this tutorial, I want you to see all the options that are available. So when you're in this box and you do a right click down here, at the bottom is going to be the Show Inspector window, and that's where I'm going to be able to change the font if I want to. I'm um, going to be able to, well this one's only got one option, but if it was a font that had bold or I, uh, italic, whatever they call that, um, that would be the, available too, and you can change the font if you want to make it bigger. Oh, that's a little big, so let's go back down to 72. Change the color, and we've talked about this little, uh, all the different colors before, and I think in iMovie, but real briefly, you know. Um, there's these different ways to find colors. You know, you got this color wheel here. You got some sliders. Um, you know, and you can just go through these and kind of figure out which way you want. There's the Apple colors here. And you can choose different ones. Web safe colors if you want to make sure it's going to you know look good on the web. I tend I tend to go with these uh, crayons here. And one thing I like about it is you know like let's say I wanted this blue and I'm like, oh, that's a little bright. I'm going to change the opacity just a little bit. And I really like that. I can click up here at the spotlight, or I mean right up here at this uh, little swatch on the top, and I can drag it down here. And so that becomes one of my favorites. So every time I'm in this uh, colors, which is almost every app pro uh, Apple program, I can actually show you by changing the color, and then I can go down here and click on that, and that's my favorite. So you can see I had another one down here. It's not actually my favorite, but I was uh, I think it was from another IDD, IDVD tutorial I'd started, but you can just click on that, and that's your favorite now. So 
that's kind of a cool way, to, you know, if you really spend some time and get a color that you really like and you think you're going to use it a lot, that's a good way to do it really uh, quickly. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, I just clicked on here while the inspector was open. You can see that a couple more options have opened up. You know, here is again the uh, intro, which I accessed with this little box that I already talked about. You can change the loop duration. So if you wanted to match a song that you put uh, in here, you, know, you could slow it down or uh, decrease the time. You know, make it 10 seconds, make it 15, whatever you want. The max right now is 20 seconds. Um, you can change the volume of a song, and that's not adjustable because uh, we don't have a song in there yet. Well, we will. Uh, snap to grid. So if you wanted to help you kind of keep things in line, that's actually a good one to uh, keep uh, selected if you want everything to be kind of lined up in a grid. But if you want total control, you would want free positioning. And then highlight, you know, again, this comes up and the, the default is yellow. And that's essentially just uh, what things, what color things are going to be when, uh, when somebody would highlight. It. So as they're panning through the play movie scene selection, what color they're going to be. So let's close that out. And let's uh, put a little audio to this thing really quick. So again, I'm in media down here. And then up here we've got audio, middles, photo, movies is to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and click on audio. And we should see a similar uh, layout to what we saw in iMovie, minus the fact that the iLife are not available. And I'm not sure why they uh, didn't include that. It's kind of an oversight, on my, uh, in my opinion. But so, you know, iTunes shows up. And again, depending on how you have your music broken up in iTunes, you know, you can search by music and type the name of the song down here in the search bar. Or you could kind of hone in a little bit by. Uh, you know, going into a playlist or a, you know a folder, which I've got this rock uh, genre uh, folder here, and you could kind of look in here for your song. Um, I tend to use a lot of the iLife stuff, and you know, again, like I said, the iLife stuff's not available. So I want to show you one quick workaround. I actually have a song on the desktop right here. And this is from iMovie and iLife stuff. So if you are in iMovie, and you know that there's a song that you want to use, a little workaround is to go to music. And this is already in iLife in Jingles. And so let's just say this Havana is the song I have to have. I'm just going to click on it, drag it over to the desktop. And that did not move that, that file. It just made a copy of it over the desktop. So now I guess click on this and drop it in here. So and just like that, the uh, the song is in there. Oh, and it's playing it because it's highlighted on the uh, desktop file. So let's go ahead and play this here. So now we got that song for our movie, and that's just gonna keep that's just gonna keep looping. So, all right. So I'm actually gonna use this one, which is in okay. It's like a little. Uh, Ceremony, World War II sounding uh, song. So let's go ahead and uh, see how fast we can uh, just make this uh, menu come together.